Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. James Episcopal Church on this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. It's great to see all of you this morning. If you have a cell phone on you, I invite you to take it out and turn it on. Check into social media or share a text, picture, or video with a loved one and spread the good news you experience with us today. Special welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Please make yourselves known in the comments on the video or share a prayer request with us. Everything you need to follow along is there on your screen. And for those of you gathered in the sanctuary this morning, everything you need to follow along is there in your bulletin and on the screens behind me. The congregational hymns can be found in the blue hymnal in your pew rack. And the service music, the Gloria, the Sanctus, the Fraction Anthem, those can be found in the little card in your pew rack as well. So now let us take just a moment to quiet our hearts and our minds, be present here with one another and with our God. Bring everything that we have, everything we've done this week here into the presence of God. Knowing that we are safe, we are enough, and we are loved. And let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let's stand and sing hymn 423 in the blue hymnal. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of, thy, of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it been not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in. Who, bring, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying together Psalm 147. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the numbers of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. 
To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, 
and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. name of God, the compassionate and merciful one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Bible pop quiz. How many commandments or mitzvahs in Hebrew are there? He was closest. Justin's closest. If you said 10, you're wrong. There are 613 commandments. Let's try an easier one. What is the fourth commandment? Oh, so close. Justin again for the win. Oh, they're in the prayer book if anybody doesn't know. He's reading the prayer book. (laughs) remember the sabbath day and keep it holy that's the fourth commandment for our jewish siblings it refers back to god's own sabbath or shabbat which means rest in hebrew genesis chapter one tells us that on the seventh day god rested from all the labors of those first six days of creation thus the observance of a time of rest from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, because in God's calendar, a day begins at dusk, not dawn. This commandment's given in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, and again in a different context in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 12. It's not a suggestion, it is an expectation. It is on a Sabbath day that we find Jesus having just exercised a demon in the synagogue in Capernaum. This was technically a violation of that commandment because it constituted work. And one isn't supposed to do any kind of work on the Sabbath day. Just ask Walter Zolchek in The Big Lebowski. And if that's not enough, he goes to the house of Simon Peter, and Simon's mother-in-law is sick with a fever, and he heals her, working again. And in doing so, he actually causes her to break the commandment because she gets up and she starts serving them food, which again is work. This Jesus, such a delinquent. Those who would criticize Jesus for breaking this part of the Jewish law, they weren't wrong necessarily, but we sometimes vilify them. Because Sabbath is a commandment. It is an expectation that is held with as much regard and respect as only worshiping one God or not cheating on your spouse. But here's the thing. Jesus 
doesn't really break that commandment about Sabbath. It's just that the commandment itself is largely misinterpreted. The Sabbath is not a day. It's not Saturday, and it sure as heck ain't Sunday. <laughs> Ancient Hebrew has no articles, no A's and thes. So the more appropriate way to read the fourth commandment might be, remember Sabbath day. No the. Remember to keep rest holy. And this Jesus does very well and very often. In today's gospel, after being bombarded by people, bringing to him all kinds of folks who were sick in body, mind, and spirit, Jesus gets up when it's still dark outside, and he goes away to what the Greek calls Eremus Topas, a lonely, secluded, isolated, solitary, or deserted place. He goes off to be by himself, to rest and to pray and to be in the presence of God. This, isn't, this is the first time that Jesus takes a Sabbath, takes a rest in the Gospels, and it certainly will not be the last. Sabbath isn't a specific day. Jesus understood this better than just about everybody. Many Christians, especially where I come from, have been shamed for missing Sunday morning's worship because the preacher said, that's what the fourth commandment's about, honoring the Lord's day, showing up to church. Never mind the fact that in no other calendar in the world except for some reason American Christian's calendar is Sunday the seventh day. Sunday has always been and will always be the first day of the week, the day of resurrection. But this isn't what's at the core of that gift of Sabbath that God gives us. Sabbath is a mindset. It is intentional. It's crafting time to rest, maybe to set oneself apart from others, just you and God. It's a time of being, not doing. And it's mandatory. You don't have a choice. The truth, brothers and sisters, is that we live in a time and in a country that has little use for Sabbath. Little use for rest of any kind. 24-7, 365, we're all expected to be Waffle House. Just open all the time. This mindset has plagued the church, especially since the advent of the internet and smartphones. And sure, we can reach more people than we ever have before, thanks be to God, for that. And at the same time, clergy and other church staff members are expected now more than ever to be on call at all hours of the day and night, constantly checking texts and emails providing everything to everyone, everywhere, all at once. During the pandemic, this was especially true because clergy and church staff everywhere were feeling that increasing anxiety as we tried to keep our church communities together during that crisis. We all did the best we could, did pretty good, I think, but it resulted in a lot of what clinical and social psychologists call overfunctioning. We used to call it being a workaholic. It's not much better. And the result of overfunctioning is burnout. 
And at its root is a lack of rest, of self-care, of Sabbath. Now, before 2021, I was a certified overfunctionist. I can remember my first church job. My rector telling me that if she caught me coming in on my day off one more time, she was going to kick me off site herself. So, I snuck in when she wasn't paying attention (laughs) because my office was in a different building. I took the same approach that St. Paul took in his first letter to the Corinthians. I tried to be everything to every person that I could possibly meet so that I could do the work of the gospel. How foolish of me. I suspect Paul was an overfunctionist. And it took a pretty hard wake up call for me to finally change that behavior. Now I try to be more diligent in my observance of Sabbath, which is why my email signature says that if you email me or call me on Friday, I will not receive your message and I will get back to you the next available opportunity. Because Fridays is when I take my day off. It's a spiritual practice to observe Sabbath. And because it's a practice, like any practice, we fail. But we keep at it. We keep trying again and again and again because, after all, practice makes perfect. Brothers and sisters, it is so important to our emotional, our mental, our spiritual, even our physical well-being that we find ways to observe Sabbath rest in our lives. we got to work at it these days harder than we ever have. But we got to do it. And as churches, it is vital to the health of the community for our clergy and our vestry members to model Sabbath rest for everybody else. And if they're not, For folks to let them know that that is an expectation. Our culture glorifies overfunctioning and calls rest lazy. Puts the whole onus on our shoulders. Sabbath helps us give that burden over to God and trust God's abilities to handle it better than ours. We might overfunction because we care so much. I totally get that. But in order to care for others, we have to care for ourselves first. Think about when you get on a plane. And that demonstration they do right before takeoff, there's a reason why we secure our own mask first before we assist others. And Jesus understood this. It's why he went away so often to be alone, to pray, to rest, and to just be in the presence of God. And sure, people found him. (laughs) They came out hunting for him just like they did in the gospel today. Where have you been? (laughs) Everybody's looking for you. Jesus doesn't give in to that anxiety. He keeps that practice. And if Jesus can do it, well, what's our excuse? It's not all up to us. Thank God for that, literally. How each of us makes Sabbath time for ourselves looks different but it is essential because we are human beings not human doings so remember Sabbath day remember to take your rest 
and make it holy. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. the Christ's light being brought to the whole world, let us make our prayers to God for the church and the world, saying, Light of the world, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for Christ's body, the church, that all who minister in the name of the Lord Jesus will be filled with your truth, strengthened by your love, and guided by your Holy Spirit. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of South America and our own diocese at St. Albans and St. Paul's in Syracuse. We also pray for our partners in El Salvador and locally at First Presbyterian Church here in Skinny Atlas. Light of the world. For the peace of the world, especially in Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, and all areas of civil unrest. May all those in positions of public trust be guided and governed by the Holy Spirit. Light of the world. For all areas affected by natural disasters, especially those caused by human-made climate change. Safeguard those in harm's way. Assist those who are helping. And show us what we can do, both in prayer and action. Light of the world. For all those who are in any kind of trouble. For those who are sick hungry, afraid, lonely, estranged from those they love, persecuted for who they are, or facing any kind of challenge, that they may be comforted and know the healing power of your love. We pray for all those on our hearts and minds this day, either silently or aloud. Light of the world. For those who have died, especially Phyllis Lerwick, that they may take their place with all the saints in light, we pray for all those awaiting the resurrection to eternal life, either silently or aloud. Light of the world. For an end to gun violence of every kind, Heal our souls and endow us with the courage to step down from the pulpits and out from our pews to seek your peace. Grant us voices to speak truth to power and compassion to the hurting. Light of the world. Hear our prayer. For all refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers, 
as we remember that our Lord and his family lived as strangers in a strange land, may we welcome and support the stranger in our midst, that we may see one another as brothers and sisters in the household of God. Light of the world. For our neighbors in the Onondaga Nation and Haudenosaunee Confederacy, on whose ancestral lands we live, work, and worship. By your grace, help us to be mindful of our own privilege and the truth of our past, that we may seek reconciliation and hope for our shared future as we promote racial, environmental, and economic justice for all people. Light of the world. For the holy and life-giving gift of water in our region, may we be faithful stewards of all of the resources that you have given us. Inspire in us ways to practice creation care, both in our church and in our homes, that we may heed the biblical mandate to live in rightful relationship with all created things. Light of the world. For a blessing on the ministry of our Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission, and for Deborah Rose Berlotti and Meg Osborne, our ministry chairs. Thank you for their commitment to lifting up the voices and experiences of the marginalized and educating our congregation through the Diversity Book Club, film study, guest lecturers, and so much more. May their work inspire all of us to examine our own privilege and notice our blind spots that we not only raise up voices for racial justice and reconciliation, but be agents of change in our communities. Light of the world. During this time of transition, we pray for the members of our search committee, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit to call a person who will serve as the next rector of St. James with faithfulness, love, courage, and humor. Light of the world. For all those who visit our parish, may we welcome all those we meet with the abundant love of Jesus, light of the world. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all hatred and prejudice and whatever else may hinder us from godly union and concord. That as there is but one body and one spirit, one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so we may be all of one heart and of one soul, united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity, and may with one mind and one mouth glorify you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Y'all may be seated. Great to see y'all this morning. It is annual meeting day. Yay! Yay. There was much rejoicing. Uh, so go on out, get brunch or whatever, and come on back. About 1230, we'll gather here in the sanctuary uh, for annual meeting. We will have uh, our written annual report, which I think you can go ahead and grab and take with you as you leave if you want to. Please do take a look at that. A lot of hard work, a lot of time and, and love went into that, both from uh, those who made the reports and the folks who put it together. Um, so really appreciate all of, all of them for their hard work. So take a look at it. And come on back uh, not only to, to vote in our vestry uh, election, and this is a pretty important vestry, 
that we're voting on after all, but also to hear from our staff and to just experience all that God is up to in our midst in this wild and wacky year uh, that, we're, that we're in together. So come on back to today at 1230. Uh, take a look at your weekly. Make sure you grab one. Lots going on uh, in our midst. Just a couple of highlights. Um, this Wednesday is our last Episcopal 101 for this uh, winter season, although as I understand it, this is hardly a winter as far as you people are concerned up here, um, but whatever. Um, our, our last Episcopal 101 for this season uh, is this Wednesday at 5. We're calling it, uh, When Do I Cross Myself? Um, we're looking at all the different manual acts we do in church, so crossing, genuflecting, kneeling, all of that good stuff. Um, where did it come from? Why do we do it? When do we do it? Et cetera, et cetera. Should be a fun talk, so... Come on back 5 o'clock on the parish hall on Wednesday for our last 101 for the season. And Lent's right around the corner, so uh, do sign up for Shrove Tuesday as you're heading out on February 13th. That's to give us a head count for uh, our pancake supper. Uh, and remember that we're starting that off on the 13th at 5.30. Uh, with the burning of the palms, so you can bring your palm branches uh, from last year's Palm Sunday. You can put them in the basket uh, next Sunday, or uh, if you come across them at any other point, you can bring them that night uh, at 5.30 on the 13th. And they'll be used for ashes for Ash Wednesday the next day, where we'll have three opportunities to be together, 7 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. I'll be available for confessions during the morning, and ashes to go will be offered in the parking lot across the street from 2 to 4 uh, for anybody that can't make it uh, that day. Pastor Mike Hill will actually be offering them from 11 to 1, and then I'll pick up after him uh, from 2 to 4 for anybody that can't make it in person uh, for worship that day. So lots of opportunities for us to be together as we begin our Lenten journey. I uh, also want to let y'all know Interfaith is looking for 100 backpacks for the new refugees arriving in Syracuse to begin their process of becoming citizens. So if you've got some backpacks you would like to donate, uh, you can do so. There's a section in the hallway between the sacristy and the church office, pretty clearly marked. You can bring uh, those backpacks if you'd like to help out with that, and we appreciate y'all doing so. And a reminder that the uh, Rector Search Committee has sent out a parish-wide survey. They sent it out last week. Uh, it might be in your inbox. It might also be in your junk files uh, on your computer. So make sure that you check uh, both of those, and please do fill out that survey. It is so important uh, to get everybody's thoughts, feelings, uh, anxieties, everything that you, that you bring to it uh, to help us put together that parish profile that's going to go out and let everybody know uh, what St. James is all about. And if you didn't have an opportunity uh, at either of the in-person office hours that the search committee held, especially if you're somebody who regularly attends uh, online or you're a snowbird and you've already moved away uh, for the season, then the search committee will be offering a couple of online office hours over Zoom, the first of which is tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., and then again next Sunday at 12.15. So if you want to participate in that, make sure you contact Marsha Watt or Colleen Gannon, who are our chairs for the search committee, to get that Zoom link. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Birthday? birthday. When's your birthday? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, the seventh. The seventh? Wednesday. Earl's your birthday? Today. Today. Mazel tov. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we hope that this year is a little bit better than the end of the last one. <laughs> Let's say the birthday and anniversary prayer for the folks here and for anybody who is online. May the strength of God pilot you. May the power of God preserve you. May the wisdom of God instruct you. May the hand of God protect you. May the way of God direct you. May the shield of God guard you against the snares of evil and the temptations of this world. And may the Spirit of God bless you in the coming year.
Happy birthday, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Justin. Good, good, good morning. Still morning. Still morning. I hope it's still morning. Um, just wanted to remind folks that after the annual meeting at 4 o'clock over at Hendricks Chapel at SU is their first of what I hope is, I secretly hope at least, is going to become an annual thing of their hymn sing. We are bringing a good portion of our choir. Um, that, so they'll be heading over at 2.30, but, we, but we'd love to have some folks in the audience to sing along with us. So come over at 4 o'clock. You can park on the quad, probably the only time you'll ever be allowed to do that and enjoy uh, an hour or so of wonderful hymns to sing. Thank you, Justin. Anybody else got anything for the good of the order? Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Babe, we send you out to share communion this week with those in need. May you carry the prayers of all of us as you take this sacrament of Christ's presence. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in you can do infinitely more than you can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Our service begins. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.